Hey everybody, I am back from Chicago, and I just wanted to let you know that I uploaded this video earlier, but it got, uh, the data got scrambled at the end, so I wanted to re-upload it with a few extra scenes. So here is my trip, fish collecting, on the Fox River and its tributaries out in Chicagoland, Chicagoland area, with uh, Jonathan Butkiss. So let's take a look at it. Here we go. All right, so I have landed in Chicago, and thanks to Jonathan, I got picked up straight from the airport, and we're not wasting time, we're not getting food, we're not doing anything, we are going to the creek, and uh, I, I want to say thanks to Mark over at Jonah's Aquarium, because uh, uh, he has the best nets. Those are definitely the perfect dip net, as they are called. I use those at home, so I was super stoked to see those here when I got here. So, uh, Jonathan, Let's hear a little bit about yourself. You uh, also you collect fish. You do aquascapes. Um, what are we out here doing today? And and what do you like to do with this sort of activity? You uh, you also make videos or? Uh, so yeah, my name's Jonathan. Um, I uh, am a resident of the Chicagoland area here. Um, I do a little bit of everything. Uh, I currently am working in the industry, so I do work for uh, Oase. Uh, um, you know, so that's kind of my day job regularly. But outside of that, I am an aquascaper as well too. And uh, you know, aside from aquascaping, I'm also a big native fish nut as well too. So, right on. Uh, today we're going to check out uh, what's in that creek. And, All right. Uh, yeah, we're going to. I'm see, excited. Uh, hopefully, some cool darters, and maybe a couple shiners, a couple different types of. Uh, uh, chubs and uh, cool. some other cool things. So too. you take pictures of fish, I know, and you know your aquascapes and stuff. And where can people find that? Just before we get set out on this journey. Yeah. So currently, I just have a couple of social media spots. So I have a TikTok, which is Jonathan Butkus Media. Okay. And I also have Instagram as well too. So it's Instagram. It's okay. J o h n a t h o n. It's a weird spelling. I gotta. I gotta find something. <laughs> there are a lot of versions of that spelling, yeah. so it's all you know. But. Uh, I'll link the, the info in the description below, but let's get to the river or creek. I don't even know where we're going. It's just, you know, yeah, it's an adventure, so. Sure. All right, focus here on beautiful rainbow darter, and we got blue that we can get him to show if we shake him a little bit. I know that doesn't sound very nice. And then on the face, he's also got some turquoise showing too. Very beautiful. We'll get some still shots because this is just not going to do it justice, but what a beautiful fish right there. I have come a long way to see this fish, and I am extremely excited to see that turquoise under the eye, the turquoise on the dorsal front, dorsal fin there. So cool. What a beautiful fish. You got a big net full of fish, huh? Some, uh, uh, some green sunfish in there. Oh, yeah. A bunch of creek chubs. So you can tell that this guy on the back right here, so like this one right closest to my finger, yeah. it's a creek chub. See how he's got that, that spot on his tail? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in between the fins on his tail and the start where his body is, that's called the uh, the caudal peduncle. And that's got that black spot there. Oh, here comes some sunlight too. Yeah, and these guys are going to be gorgeous. Yeah, these sunfish the will have rainbow them? colors on them. See all the colors on those guys? It's pretty cool. And those look like little maybe green sunfish or yeah, a pumpkin? Those are green sunfish. Green sunfish. Definitely. Yeah very pretty yeah but all the different fins they all have different colors and they all have really cool characteristics so you can tell them apart when you look into them and you know learn more about them and all that jazz to, to really know like what is what you know There's a lot of really cool species out here. yeah in the springtime these will be like electric blue does that blue surprise blue. you guys that they're in the creek yeah i never know yeah it's living right here that's why you, why you shouldn't throw trash in the creek right yeah. <laughs> So this is a white sucker. So usually you see them when they're much bigger, right? In the river when you're fishing for bigger fish and stuff. And, and a black. Little western black nosed dace on the side here. So there's all sorts of different shiners and minnows and stuff. Fish here? Oh, yeah. yeah, right in this little creek, there's fish. Yeah, look at this little guy. He's got all sorts of metallic color on him. Peppery color, silver and black. Gotta hold it still here, cause I'm zoomed in. All right, so we've got a black line down, kind of the lateral line, then a nice golden shimmer above that. No color detectable in the fins, uh, anal fin, uh, pelvic fins, and uh, also uh, it's got the, uh, uh, um, why am I spacing on their name, the arm fins. Uh, 
and the dorsal fin obviously no wait does it have a no no add a there's no no adipose on these guys or no adipose ever okay there's not really a distinct uh mark at the caudal peduncle either which generally would be a good marker in yeah. your uh uh you know uh so from above he does have kind of some bronze color to him can i hold it for a second yeah, thank you um so from above you can see this beautiful gold and bronze yeah that shows up really well okay good I was worried it wasn't going to show up on camera and then you can see it in the body too so uh interesting it almost looks like a red-sided shiner from washington because we only have washed out boring shiners uh, up there we only have two anyways hillside and uh red si red si striped or red sided but this guy has a nice little line on him he looks like he could be a i mean the markings he could be you know a daniel as far as the color palette goes for your tank but uh, yet nobody really keeps these much in America compared to the tropical fish. But it's something to consider if you have a cold water tank uh, to keep the non-threatened species that are right in your backyard. Chicago, not my backyard. Very cool. So here we've got a rainbow darter and we'll try to get him to perk up in a second. You can see the blue on his dorsal if you look carefully. Then also we have uh, two of these uh, fungulus, uh, do you know their full name? Uh, fungulus notati, or notatus. Notatus, which is the black striped top minnow, uh, bl or black banded top minnow. Uh, very pretty little fish. They look like the, le the, some of the killies down in Florida. Uh, they've got a little bit of speckle on their fin on some of them. Others don't. It just seems to vary. And it might be the difference between male and female, but some also are zigzag whereas others seem to have more of a clear bar. So we'll get some pictures and hopefully uh, see kind of the difference. Right, so now we're at this culvert and we can see things kind of darted out of the way in the shadows, we see movement. Moving around in there. So what we're gonna yeah. do is we're gonna put both of our nets yep. that are the Jonah's uh, hoop nets. Yeah. Six, uh, 12 or 16 inch hoop nets, right? I think, yeah, I think they're 16. 16, yeah. we're gonna put them down on the side here so yeah. that way basically the rest where the culvert is running to yep. whenever you're collecting fish like you really don't want to try and harm the fish in any way so what no. you do is you're pretty much spooking them downstream into the water so we'll put both of our nets here i'll walk through the creek further up and spook all the fish down into our nets here yeah and i'm gonna need both hands for well that one stays on its own i guess but i'm gonna hold since the flow is strong enough here but it's shallow enough that we won't have to worry about that but hopefully we'll get them all here and he's gonna scare what's uphill and this is kind of like making a sang net uh or a sane net rather um out of two of these nets from uh, jonah's aquarium and a lot of times you'll you won't even see them when they when they make their way uh into the net i think one just did uh into your net you won't even see them escape and we'll see what we've got in the nets. So down here in these culverts and also where there's like boat launches and things along this river. It's a good sized river. These darters have had to come up these culverts. You get something else? Oh, we've got a surprise. Careful by your foot. Holy cannoli. Oh wow, that was just in that creek huh there's more too so wow um, oh so that's a sucker huh yep that's is a white I'm not, yeah i can't yeah, tell probably a white sucker and there's probably a juvenile right there right yep yeah, yeah and then these guys uh they look similar uh, to the little guys we uh were look oh, yeah might be two different things um, i can't tell not a creek chub there's another common species i can't remember off the top of my head all right it's been a while right but, on yeah. kind of neat to see a sucker at the full grown the yeah. really cool thing is with suckers on the underneath of their mouth Oh yeah, the type of lip that they yeah, have. if they're a chisel or if they have a little yeah, bone. Yeah, the, the papillae, I believe, is what yeah. it's called. That's on like the little tiny. It's hard to see because he's the little still palette. Small, but yeah, he's a healthy little guy. He's got some nice color to him. Yeah, he does. He's good size. Wow, that looks nice with the red and everything. Yeah, Let me get some I, still pictures fish. too. Wow, that's very nice. A little Johnny darter, and we found it in this little roadside stream here, just in the Chicagoland area, and. Uh, it's got W's and X's or Y's and M's, depending on what letter uh, you're looking at, 
on its uh, lateral line right there, right along the side. You guys see the, the letter W and Y or X? They almost look like runes, and then it turns into kind of a snake skin and uh, arrow pattern, and then they get a darker head. Well, these turn really a beautiful blue color some of the year, and these were on my list of what I wanted to collect. And what he's doing down there, what Jonathan's doing down there, is he's just walking up the creek looking underneath this all this immersed growth and just kind of jiggling side to side and bouncing with the net and that's how we're catching these that's how we've caught these two species right off the bat what we should really be doing is i should be down river from him and then as he scares something out uh it'll be caught in a bottleneck like where we caught these which was right there i put my net there and he just bounced up and down and kind of disturb the rocks a little bit all the way down here now this isn't a pristine habitat whatsoever I mean there's a whole bunch of trash in here and stuff uh, and there's also algae growing in here so it must get morning sunlight it's going on 5 30 or 6 p.m. now um, so we are seeing a little bit different uh, light here and lights running a little bit low but we're gonna walk down here and see what else we can find in this little creek uh species wise gem, yeah uh, johnny darter oh nice yeah johnny darters and they get they can be really bright and colorful weirdly colorful like nine times out of ten they're not and then you get them when they are and yep that's a giant no yeah, doubt there's like right nothing on. that this is the most characteristic darter you could get because it's got the x's and w's on the side X's they're fun and, w. and they're they're really hardy too let me know if you want me to wipe that side off i think it's much. okay oh wait yeah there we go x's and w's on them um you know what's cool is everyone complains that the stiffidons uh from the pacific mm -hmm. are hard to breed in captivity so like you know so so they have to be wild caught and it's like well these breed in captivity in mm -hmm. theory so like I don't understand why they're not. There isn't more of a you know a demand for them. Um, yeah, I agree. Even if you just took rainbow shine, uh, rainbow darters, yeah, orange throat darters, and like some of the more common species, like these guys. Yeah, I'll hold it for you too. Johnny darters. Um, if you really need, if there's a little higher demand that brought some more aquaculture, you know, or like Florida farms, like you can get. I mean, to legally get like some darters in, I pick some of the vats at some of the wholesalers and things like that that you know uh they get like swamp darters and bluefin killies in with them. yeah like, bluefin uh, killies are gorgeous oh my god talk about it if you ever want just like a, a single colony fish but yeah. you want something gorgeous those are incredible the blue on them I, I, yeah. there's nothing that matches it man these these guys are cool you're right they do have like an x and a w or an m and a y i don't know what it is an x w m y and so there are some other darters that have similar patterns but this is very characteristic of johnny darter specifically so this is how we know that that is what it is even though the coloring isn't quite well it, when they're in bright color too the males will get like a really kind of dark head and uh -huh. they get kind of like a bluish color almost. oh yeah i've seen some pictures they're where really, they're really bright um, it up he's been upstream kind of chopping down oh yeah we got some nice so we got some in here looks like some sort of limestone or something out here that's this is probably like this is just like all work they did so it's probably okay oh we got some darters two, two darters um okay so i believe this is a black-sided darter yeah persina uh um here let me get some water yeah and then we got another one here and you can actually see what they're eating too some little larva. Interesting. So we'll get them in the water here in a moment in this little uh, specimen container and we'll look at them again. So here we have a black sided darter, a very nice little species. Priscina maculata. Priscina maculata? I think so. Yeah. Very nice. Cute little face, almost like a little stiffodon or stiphodon. Uh, and then these guys get pretty sizable too. They'll get they'll get about the length of the container, like five six inches almost. Oh wow! Get them full grown, yeah. And uh, so I see three spots patterning on the top of the dorsal, and then kind of a nice dotted, uh, almost like Morse code. And then there's some subtle X's in between the black dots on the lateral line. Uh, that then then it kind of terminates into almost like a three chain oval pattern and then its face is 
very cute with some little gold raw golden uh, kind of golden and green and then also you can make out the scales and the spotting on that let's try to see if we can catch it in a sunbeam um, let's see where was that sunbeam oh yeah there you go beautiful it's just a really nice contrast from that bold black yeah. splash line to the yeah. underneath and then the top. Yeah, that's great. And I can't believe it's just in this little creek. Very cool. Beautiful fish. Alright, so this is another one we thought was a baby. Uh, we'll, yeah, get him in the specimen container. We thought was a baby uh, of the um, sucker fish, but it looks like it could be some sort of dace or something. We'll have to release the Johnny darter that I left in there. Um, but he's got a whole net full of fish there. And it looked like maybe just juveniles and adults at first glance. But I think it's several shiners and several, maybe a dace, maybe a... Let's this, see here. Uh, this could be a sucker. I honestly... I'm I not... can't see its mouth, so I can't tell yet. Oh, it's kind of got a sucker mouth. Yeah, it's probably for the same, a young one. same species. But it's really juvenile. pretty. Uh, the the, the scales and the color kind of yeah. throws me off sometimes. You really got to go for like hard hitting characteristics. Yeah, like totally. Fin rays, etc. But I just mm, yeah, it, I'm not refreshed on that right now. No, really. I I hear you. I mean, sometimes it's just fun to observe and then figure it out later. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, not too worried yeah. about like yeah figuring it out right away. But it's like oh then I'll look at the picture and know what we had there, and then you can always go back like when you're na when it's a native that it's in your town. Yeah. Very cool, very, very cool. How quintessential Midwest or prairie state can you get? Look at this, beautiful sunset on the Fox River. Look at that, very cool. And we got lots of fish over there that we're gonna have to take a look at before the sun's gone. And I'm gonna take a couple scoops in the, this uh, floating immersed growth here too. See if we can get some fundulus or uh, some killies or top minnows. I see them. I see them down in there. Look at that beautiful view across the way. What a Midwest slash Great Plains or Prairie. I mean, what a perfect view. And look at this, how the river is reflecting up onto the trees. Can you guys actually see that on the leaves? Beautiful. It's, it's subtle, but it is so cool to see. Oh, and look who came with the delivery. Jonathan has got a delivery for me. We got a larger black uh, striped top minnow here. Black striped top minnow. So Let's get dialed in. Oh, yeah, and the tails. Lucky, the, the, the males, it, I think I'm gathering, because about half of the ones I've seen have the dots on the tail and the uh, on the on the back on the anal fin now he's interesting he seems to have some sort of spinal deformity at the end of his tail there. yeah like it's so far back yeah he also see, i mean he's really chunky for i mean yeah he's been eating well but um he's a beautiful fish yeah he's so. almost got like a, a a pike minnow shape to him yeah or, or um, a golden wonder killy shape to him. I, I mean, all that, that uh, what is it, subterminal mouth, right? Yeah. Um, it's like slightly upturned, right? Yeah. They're, they spend all their time, if you get them on camera, and they're feeding just, yeah, they're just right under the surface. Yeah, they're just popping at the surface and in the yeah. water column and such. Beautiful. What, what's this called? The speckled? This is a, a western black nose dace. Western black nose dace. So they've got this really nice uh, kind of like rusty bar along their side of their body. Yeah. Um, and then their, their nose shape and just the, you know, how many dorsal rays they have. All sorts yeah. of indicators as far as this one goes. But very, very uh, iconic here in the, the Midwest. Very cool. Um, and coming out of just a little side ditch here with a lot yeah. of immersed growth and it's just flowing vegetation some garbage too you know? yeah <laughs> you hey the whole illinois treatment <laughs> yeah i mean stickleback and things like that in washington will be uh, not necessarily flowing like this but just on the side of the road in a creek like that you yeah. know could be brackish even but yeah there's actually some pretty weeds here i'm sure a lot of them are invasive and whatnot but yeah i mean it's it's just a pretty little creek right next there and uh Quite a pretty little fish, really. I mean, that could be a Danio as far as, you know, 
the sparkles and stuff. Uh, I bet if we get it in a ray of sun, it probably sparkles a little metallic, huh? Let's see. I see sun somewhere down here. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're just. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so it's got some nice sparkly to it, some nice iridescent little iridophore uh, cells that are full of little guanine crystals that that act like little prisms and it's got kind of a little black spot at the base of its dorsal huh yeah mm -hmm. very pretty on so, this side is where the riffle area is so. wow well, we've got a lot of different habitat here actually a lot of diversity of cool micro ecosystems you've got kind of standing water that's going to be your warmer water species wouldn't be surprised to see some pumpkin seed sunfish you know something like that in fact i see some little fish over there and then you got your quicker water and uh, riffle fish out there, right on. So and much, much shallower on the other side of this bank here. That's where I found all the sculpins and, and a lot of the darters before. And then in here, um, it gets much deeper because the water is basically carving out the inside. Yeah, here that, that cut bank there. Effect, right. That's where you know, honestly, a fly rod would yeah, be interesting to see what. I've caught smallmouth in here. There are they are known to be in okay. here. Okay. So you do get some larger predators in this, this yeah. river as well too. Um, it's really crazy how, how yeah. much this river can fluctuate in size. I can see rain. raccoon or coyote prints too, and dog prints it looks okay. like. So, interesting. Alright, well let's get to it. I'm going to not film us, me ungracefully getting down to the bank here, because it kind of drops off. Okay. But we'll figure it out. Yeah, maybe we can get down right over there. But Alright, so just another beautiful little fish. I know they may look the same to a lot of people, but this one actually has red in its tail, bronze on the top half with a copper line on it along the, and then it's got some little black dots coming off of that, uh, the line going down its, its entire side, and that dot on its caudal peduncle. Plus, it's got a relatively large anal fin and relatively set, uh, far set back pelvic fins. Um, which is interesting and its pectoral fins are far forward and the stripe continues through its eye and that red tone is actually showing up all the way into uh, pretty much all the fins it looks like other than the pectoral fins and the no it is so only the pelvic fins or paired back fins don't have it so um, Jonathan thinks maybe a creek chub we'll have to double check because it's very pretty to me. I know it might not be much to those folks who live here, but I love it. So here we have another small shiner of some sort. Could be the same kind. We're going to need to ID these later, which will be a trend of this video. I'll overdub it if I know what it is. But it's hard to tell when they're this young. But these ones have a little bit of purple and a little bit of gold and bronze. Again, that linear line. And then above, they've also got some metallic lining but less so than the other one now they also have mouths that are set a little lower it looks like but might be all in my head I'll have to go back and look at the footage so pretty even bluegills too common bluegills and oh he's in the shade he's hiding under your thumb that's funny but this is probably it looks like actually a little sunfish maybe we, it looks like some orange on that black dot that's the ear there. Um, we call that the ear on their, uh, the, the gill cover or operculum of the gill there. And uh, look at the iridescence on these. It's very different than the ones we see in Washington State. This is a very maze-like pattern and more greens, blues, and yellows with almost red in the tail. Washington has a red uh, maze pattern instead. So it's very interesting to see the different variations in this. And this was just caught literally bouncing along underneath this mulmy, leafy stuff. And that's where the young uh, Lipomus or sunfish varieties seem to be hanging out. And when you get different angles too on this fish, it's very different color wise, which is pretty cool. Oh, I'm blocking the sun. Uh, very cool color variations. Almost looks like a flag fish in the the body pattern with so many colors. I'm gonna hold it still here because I'm zoomed in. All right, so we've got a black line down, kind of the lateral line, then a nice golden shimmer above that. No color detectable in the fins, uh, anal fin, uh, pelvic fins, and uh, also uh, it's got the. Uh, um, why am I spacing on their name? The arm fins. Uh, 
and the dorsal fin obviously no wait does it have a no no add a there's no no adipose on these guys or no adipose ever okay there's not really a distinct uh mark at the caudal peduncle either which generally would be a good marker in yeah. your uh uh you know uh so from above he does have kind of some bronze color to him can i hold it for a second yeah, thank you um so from above you can see this beautiful gold and bronze yeah that shows up really well okay good I was worried it wasn't going to show up on camera and then you can see it in the body too so uh interesting it almost looks like a red-sided shiner from washington because we only have washed out boring shiners uh, up there we only have two anyways hillside and uh red si red si striped or red sided but this guy has a nice little line on him he looks like he could be a i mean the markings he could be you know a daniel as far as the color palette goes for your tank but uh, yet nobody really keeps these much in America compared to the tropical fish. But it's something to consider if you have a cold water tank uh, to keep the non-threatened species that are right in your backyard. Chicago, not my backyard. Very cool. So a Codus genus darter prob or a, a, a sculpin probably. Now i need to ask a taxonomist unless you happen to know but darter versus sculpin do you know why one is in one category versus another because they can look really similar yeah and they both uh, occupy pretty much the same environmental right species. yeah as they're both as, they're both benthic animals they both spend eat, their time eating in a the, highly oxygenated fast flowing creeks right and, you know this Al a little bit of algae that. on the rocks kind yeah. of thing yeah um, that's beautiful know. we'll get some still shots too yeah. Thank you so much guys for checking out the video. I really appreciate it and I appreciate it so much to have a seasoned veteran that is a local showing me around. Uh, it was an awesome trip. The AGA was really cool too and I can't thank everyone there in Chicago enough for their hospitality and for just the beauty that was uh, seeing a prairie state uh, area, Midwest state area that you could see everything from Great Lakes to pristine prairie, or at least rehabilitated prairie, uh, all within an hour and a half of Chicago. And it, it's quite the place, so I, I highly recommend you guys go there and check it out. And go collecting if you live in the area. There's lots of really beautiful fish and a huge diversity that we only scratch the surface of, so I'll definitely be going back. So if you made it this far, please hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, if you like this kind of content, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so very much. Bye.